Hey, welcome. It's Aaron Ross, author of Predictable Revenue. And I put together a little video here of my simplest, best Salesforce.com tips. You know, there's all these really, I think, simple and effective ways to use Salesforce that people don't know about just because they don't. So here are the best ones. And I've got eight here. I'll go through one by one. Let me start with the first one. Hot link your favorites. Now, every page in Salesforce is a hot link. So the neat thing is, whichever, wherever you go to the most, whether it's your tasks at home, or a report, or a dashboard, or some account, or anything, you can hot link it. So for example, uh, let's say I go to my outbound team dashboard all the time. So I click into that, and then just like any internet page, I can grab my URL, and let me highlight where my cursor is, right? Just grab it, and I can drag it to my toolbar. And so here it is, and then I can rename this if I want. So properties, let's call it, uh, you know, dashboard. It's fine. And so no matter where I am in Salesforce or the web, all right, if I click around, I'm on, I don't chat or file, let's go to leads, and then like, what's my dashboard say? Or I get in the morning, go to my dashboard, just click it. Right, just click it, and here it pops it up. Right, so you can do this with any page in Salesforce.com. And frequently what I used was I have links here for my dashboards. I might have it for my task list, for working accounts, active accounts. Uh, these are all views I might use. So here's clients. I can click in here with the clients, and so on. So this is probably the simplest, best way to start. All right, the second tip is called email to Salesforce. I think a lot of people struggle with getting your email into Salesforce because you have to, you want to copy it. Um, you might forget, but literally the simplest thing to do is you set up. It's called email to Salesforce, and I'll show you what it does. So when you're emailing somebody, let's say this is you know to, to a client, client at you know client.com. Put my marker on here, and in BCC. It's called so e an uh, email address, which is custom to you. And when you send your email, or let's say you're responding to someone, when you email this, this will actually copy it into Salesforce.com. So, for example, with I'll just pull up an account. It just ends up as a task, uh, as an activity history. Right? So here's an example where someone emailed me. And then I responded, I just BCC'd emailed that email to Salesforce address and it copied the whole email in here and I never, it did automatically. So the way to set that up to make it really easy to email, send emails into Salesforce is just go to your, go to setup, up here, go setup. And then in setup, you've got this section on email. And there's, here's email to Salesforce. And you just use this here is the email address you use to put into your BCC line. And what I'd suggest is just adding this to your contact list. So you, I just call it email to Salesforce, and I type it in and it just pops it up. Now if you go to this section and it's not here, it means your administrator hasn't activated it for you. So in this case, if you need it done, or if maybe you're the administrator and it's not set up, the, where, the place to go activate email to Salesforce for your company is just down here in administration setup, email administration, and here's email to Salesforce. And then you can just activate it, right? Active. The third tip is Salesforce for Outlook. Now, I don't use Outlook, so I can't show you what it looks like, but we there is a plugin for Outlook which offers you, you know, desktop integration to salesforce.com. Uh, it's pretty simple to get. Again, you go to your setup up here. And in email, I'm sorry, in uh, desktop integration, there's Salesforce for Outlook. You just click on it. And then uh, you'll be able to say, there's just a process to set you up and to download it and install it. Right, and I would suggest there's training and so on for Salesforce for Outlook. I'm actually not an expert because I don't, again, I don't use Outlook. 
but it's a great tool. It makes it really easy to create, I think, to create, copy emails into Salesforce, uh, look up contacts and other things right within Outlook. A fourth tip is declutter your tabs. Do you have all these tabs up here? Actually, let me highlight this. All these tabs. You know, and to me, the more clutter you have, the harder it is to find what you need. So everyone has too many of these tabs up here. First step is as a user or as a company to get rid of the stuff that you're just not going to need. It's very simple. Again, you go to setup. And in personal setup, there's an area here, change my display. And it'll look like my personal information, click it open. Change my, oops, let's change my password. Change my display. So you have two places here. You have customize my tabs. And you've got customize customize my pages. Okay, so customize customize my tabs will let you choose which tabs you want to show and which ones you want to hide. Okay, so for here, I've got a bunch of stuff I don't need, and they're just distracting me. I don't need products, forecasts, contracts, cases, campaigns. I'm just going to get rid of all these, hide them. Uh, actually, I don't even need chatter. Uh, file. I don't use files. All right, this is pretty much it. This is your basics. Home, leads, accounts, contacts, opportunities, reports, dashboards. And then sometimes companies, you might have you know one or two more things, maybe a data.com or documents, but these are your basics. I'm going to save it. Now watch. Now, a, a lot simpler, a lot cleaner. My tabs up here, there's just a few. It just makes it a lot easier to get to where I want to go. All right, the fifth way to clean up Salesforce or use it better, is to declutter your leads, accounts, contacts, and opportunities. When you go into your account page, uh, into any of your pages, your most frequently used ones, which are usually you know, leads or accounts, opportunities, you're going to have a bunch of stuff you don't need. All right, so both fields you don't need, which is going to be something that only your uh, administrator can help you sort of declutter and clean up. And then there's also going to be some subcategories or related lists that you don't need. You know, like contacts, opportunities, open activities, activity history, notes and attachments. So these are actually, I've already cleaned this up, but let me show you. You might have five more of these things. You know, partners, cases, um, I don't know, remember, there's, there could be a whole bunch of, of these related lists on your pages that you just, that are distracting you. So to change what you show on that page, Hit customize page. Actually, I'm gonna make sure you see this. Okay, so to change, there's two places you could change to you can uh, clean up these related lists. The easiest place to get to that is just go here to customize page, and you can do this on accounts, or if I go to leads, I just have to, I have to open a lead first. All right, same thing. Here's customize page. So let me look at leads. There's not too much on here. If I click on this, then it gets it lets me choose what do I want, right? And for me, I don't need campaign history. Um, I'm gonna ignore that, and I'll just save it, right? So that's easy. So campaign history is now gone, and I have it's just a, a leaner, meaner, simpler page. So you want to do this with you know, whichever your main pages are: leads, accounts, contacts, opportunities, cases whatever you think is important. And it's just that easy. Go into contacts, customize page, and I'm going to get rid of uh, I don't need cases, I don't need camp I don't need campaign history. Uh, that's about it. All right, so now my contacts all will be just leaner and meaner and easier for me to make sure that I can see what I need to see without getting distracted. All right, the sixth tip is to use views. Now, views are like mini reports. In, in any of these tabs, you know, reporting for some people, reporting can be, you know, it's just a more complex way to put together, you know, data or a list. But views could be a really simple way to create lists. Uh, whether you're in leads, accounts, contacts, opportunities, cases, it's all pretty much the same. In fact, let me go to accounts because that's where I have the most lists already. So you go to, you pick up. Go to one, click on your tab. At the top, you're automatically going to have this view. Right, so these are like mini reports, simple reports. 
So for example, I have views here for my working accounts, active prospects, clients, and there's some other stuff that are standard. Uh, so you can either create a new view. Oops, that went to it. Here's what it looks like. Actually, let's do clients, for example. You know, boom, little report. And again, even I use this, remember that first tip with hot linking. So if, if I just click here, clients, it comes up with my client list. If I want to look at active people who are actively in our, in our pipeline, clients, whatever, I can just click through it. When you create a view, it's pretty simple. You just name it, and then you have some choices for, there's really two areas I'll cover. These are just your filters to show you which accounts or which leads or whatever, right? So in this case, uh, I'm going to look at all accounts, and just our account status equals current client. Pretty simple. You know, again, if I wanted to, I could say, you know, account status equals current client, uh, state equals California, whatever. And then the next thing is, the nice thing is you can then choose what columns you want to show. So, okay, I want to see their name, their state, their telephone number, and last activity. All right, just simple. And then you can decide whether only you can see it or everyone can see it, and you save it. And that's it. Really simple. So you should do this for, you can use these for um, you know, making quick account reports, lead reports. You know, in, for example, an inbound, mar inbound uh, a market response role, it's, really gr it's great to have lists of views for sort of new leads or open leads, and you know, whatever your working leads are, and maybe qualified leads. And if you're doing outbound, it could be your, active, your working accounts, your qualifying accounts, uh, you know, check back quarterly accounts. You know, it just makes it really easy to click around to sort of say, hey, here's a list of something I need to look at so I can make it easy to take action on. All right. The seventh salesforce.com tip is dashboards. Now, dashboards is probably the most important part of salesforce.com to use. Uh, or I'd say it is the most important. And they, they can be simple. It's just you, gotta have to, you have to do a couple of them first to practice in order to get into the flow of how to make dashboards. So here's an example dashboard. Actually, I don't have any data in this, uh, but just to show you, you can put in one place a very simple view around the things that are going on with your business. Yeah, so if you have an outbound team, it's more of a demo, you can say, here's all the mass emails. Who's, who is sending how many mass emails per month? All right, who is having how many call connects per month or week? You know, how many responses are people getting? Um, you know, what open opportunities do we have? And actually, in the book, I go through maybe what reports should be on an outbound team dashboard. But the point is, you can create a dashboard for yourself if you're a sales rep, if you're a sales manager. Um, you, it's the the point is, you can have a one-click place to get to your sort of uh, the all the key things that are going on in your business, no matter whether you're a manager or a rep or an executive. And I always, for my key dashboards, I'll just put them a uh, hot link them. All right, so I just click to it. I can see it any time. Okay, this is one of my, really is the most important thing you can do to get the most out of Salesforce. Now, to get started with dashboards, if you're new to it, if you haven't found help and training, right, it's up here. Help and training. There's an online class called Getting Started with Reports and Dashboards. So you go to the training center. Again, here, here's Take Training. Find an online course, online training, and then simplify it. You know, by your role. So, sales rep or manager. Let's do that. All right, getting started with reports and dashboards. Ten minutes. Yeah, it's pretty simple. And again, the point. It's hard. Don't try to do a dashboard perfectly up front. You build it. You know, put a basic one together, and then you evolve it as you go. All right, the eighth Salesforce.com tip is online training. Well, as I just showed you with the dashboard report, uh, dashboard class, there's a lot of online training here with Salesforce.com. Right, so I would highly recommend that you take it. They're not long. Right, so these are they're typically 15 to 30 minutes. And for sales rep, there's only six. There's a whole bunch of, uh, if you don't have paid support, you notice there's a bunch of grayed out classes. You know, I don't know. I have never watched a lot of these. I'm not sure of the quality of them. You know, I think that this, these simple ones should be plenty to get you started. 
And what I'd recommend is you should take at least check out all of them, especially. Again, there's this one getting started with Salesforce CRM sales, and then there's getting started with reports and dashboards. Those are two of the key ones. And, you know, there's no reason why you can't have fun uh, surfing around in here to see what else they have. If you're an administrator, they've got some administration courses you should for sure take. All right, well, it's been Aaron Ross here with a few simple ways to improve your use of Salesforce.com. Now, I, I really encourage you to, to try try all of these one by one. Take some training. You know, again, the the more comfortable you can get with Salesforce, you and your team, it makes it so much easier to you know learn and implement sales processes or to get the results you want. You know, I think there's a lot of fear or uncomfortableness with Salesforce, and even even sitting down with someone who's an expert and having them showing you a few things really can get you over the hump and a lot more comfortable and familiar and it makes it a lot easier to, again, uh, just be successful with sales. So, all right, enjoy. And I'd love to hear what you think of this.